Hey, it's Vass here from Aussie RC Playground and welcome to another episode of RC Hot Tip. Today we're going to be discussing part two of understanding LiPo batteries. Now in part one, I talked about the different voltage stages of LiPo batteries, such as your storage voltage, full charge voltage, and of course, low voltage. Now, if you wanna go and check out that video, please be sure to check out the video description. I'll have a link in there for you to click on. Now, this episode, we're going to be talking about all the little fancy numbers that you see on the labels of all your LiPo batteries. Now, of course, if you've been in the hobby for a while, there's not gonna be anything here that's gonna be totally new to you. You probably know what all of these numbers mean, and you're fully up to speed with everything that you need to know about these batteries. However, if you are new to the hobby, and believe me, I see it every day working in a hobby shop, I see people come in and they don't know what the 50C means, what the 5200 means, what the 7.4 volt means, all of these sorts of things can be a little bit overwhelming if you are just starting out, if you have never really dealt with any of this stuff before. So hopefully this video will clear some of that, for, uh, some of that up for you and uh, I will be explaining it in very simple terms that hopefully everyone can understand. Now, of course, if you're expecting this video to have all sorts of fancy graphs and test equipment used on these batteries and all of this type of thing, this isn't the video for you. This is just a very basic explanation for people who are starting out in the hobby, or perhaps for those of you who may be a little bit unsure about what all of this means, maybe you might get some useful information out of this video and that's really what I'm aiming for here. So let's start off with the basic, straight on the back of that first episode, we're gonna talk about voltages. So these batteries are all in different voltages. There's a couple here that I don't have, such as a 1S and a 5S, but essentially you'll get the gist of it. So LiPo batteries are measured in 3.7 volt increments. So a 1S would be a 3.7 volt battery. A 2S would be a 7.4, a 3S would be an 11.1, a 4S, a 14.8, a 5S would be an 18.5, but I don't have any of those. And a 6S is a 22.2 volts, uh, which is that one here and that one there as well. So that gives you an idea of the different voltages. Now you can't use a 6S on every single vehicle that exists out there. There are limitations, and those limitations are on the specs of the vehicle itself. Uh, if, of course, you bought a ready-to-run, it'll you know it'll have specs on the electrics and what the electrics can handle. And of course, if you are building a kit, you can of course check out the specs of the electrics that you are installing and what voltages they can handle. So you can't just go, okay, I bought myself a little ECX amp. I can run it on 7.4 volts, uh, but how cool will it be if I could double the power output and go to a 14.8 volt. Well, that doesn't quite work that way. You're gonna either blow up the car um, or if the uh, speed controller has a over voltage protection, as soon as you plug in this sort of battery, it just won't even work. It'll just shut down. Uh, that's best case scenario. And that pretty much sums up voltages. Think of it as octane in your fuel. The higher the octane, the bigger the burn. And essentially that's what the voltage is. Uh, the higher the number of the voltage, the more cells you have, the more burn you're going to have in your electrics. But of course, as I said, not every car can take you know, the highest uh, voltage battery that's out there. Now, the next one that we're gonna be discussing are of course these numbers that are usually quite large and they're stamped on all the labels of all these batteries. What do those numbers mean? This is milliamp per hour. This is your runtime. Think of it as the size of your fuel tank. The bigger the battery, the more runtime you're going to get out of that single charge. Essentially, that's how it works. However, there is something that you need to take into account. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, as you go up in capacity of battery, the battery physically gets bigger as well. And that's something that you really need to take into account when trying to fit it into a specific car. So to put it into perspective here, we have a 2S battery and we have a 3S battery. Now, despite the fact that these are different milliamps, the biggest difference here is going to be the size. And I guess a more fairer size comparison would be here because this is a 5,000 milliamp and this is a 5,200 milliamp. And you can see the size thickness difference there. Now these are hard case packs. A lot of the times you can get a soft case pack 3S, which will be very similar to the 2S pack. Now 2S packs will fit in most cars. Uh, and of course 3S packs can fit in a lot of cars as well. But of course you do need to make sure that you have the ability to fit something thicker like this as well. And of course that the weight of the battery is not going to affect the performance of the car all that much or, or at all for that matter. 
So that's milliamp per hour in a nutshell. It is simply runtime. Now, the last thing we're gonna be talking about is of course the C rating. And the C rating is essentially the discharge rating of your LiPo battery. And every LiPo will have a C rating. So that's these little numbers that you see here. So you got 50C, 40C, this one's 60, this one's 20, 45, 30, 50, and 60C on that guy there. So I like to look at the C rating as a fuel pump. So if the voltage is like the octane of a fuel, the milliamp per hour is the fuel tank capacity, so that's your, uh, your run time, then the C rating is essentially a fuel pump. Now you might be thinking, okay, if that's the case, I'm gonna go out there and get myself the biggest battery with the highest C rating that I can find or can afford, and that's going to turn my you know, RC into an absolute rocket. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. The fuel pump only delivers the fuel necessary to the motor that the motor requires. So the battery doesn't push the voltage or the amps to the motor. It's the motor that draws that power. And then of course the ESC uh, reads that and pulls that from the battery and the battery needs to deliver that to the motor. Now there is a way that you can calculate this to work out what type of, you know, which battery is going to be best suited for the type of RC that you're using. Uh, and it's a very simple mathematical equation. So if we have the milliamp per hour, so in this case here, uh, 5,200 milliamps, you divide that by a thousand, so you get 5.2, and you times that by the C rating. So 5.2 times 50 is 260 amps. So that's how many amps this battery here can deliver. This one here, for example, 132 amps. This one here, a whopping 312 amps. This one, only 64 amps. And that guy there, 198. 275 for this guy here, 150 for this one, and 103.5 and, uh, for this little guy here. Now, in the next episode, we're gonna be talking about voltage sag, which is something that happens with some of these batteries, especially some that have a low C rating. I've got a bit of a system in place on how I'm going to explain voltage sag to you, and uh, hopefully you guys will get something out of that video as well, so stay tuned for that. That is it from me, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Up. don't forget to subscribe if you're new and as always check out the video description down below i'll have links to previous rc hot tip videos as well as links to my social media pages thank you again and i'll speak to you all next time